Welcome to the Spring 2021 WSU Tri-Cities State of the Campus Address. It's truly a pleasure to be speaking to you this afternoon. While we cannot yet gather in person, I am pleased to see all of you in the virtual world today. We have now surpassed the one year mark of working remotely. If you would have asked me a year ago if I thought we would be here at this time, Zooming, or as I like to say, Zoom hopping from one class, one meeting, or one thing to another, I would have confidently said, oh no. But as you know, we were making plans and predictions early on with very limited information. And as things proceeded, information continued to shift as the virus itself as well as the public health recommendations continued to change. There is still much to be learned and there is still lots of change, change on the horizon. What we do know is that what became our new reality just over a year ago challenged our community, our state and our nation in so many ways. It also changed us. In February, our country surpassed the 500,000 mark for lives lost as a result of COVID-19. Many people were subject to a lack of access to health care because of an overwhelmed health care system and health care supply shortages. Many others experienced unemployment and social isolation or a heightened sense of despair, perhaps leading to some into behavioral issues such as substance abuse or even taking their own lives. Clearly, the virus and the disruptions from the pandemic have taken a toll on us all. We missed so much graduation ceremonies, weddings, funerals, hugging our elderly parents or our grandchildren. And really, we lost so much simply in not being able to adhere to our normal routines and engage in some of our most enjoyable activities. On top of the pandemic, we were also tested both personally and professionally as our society faced heightened racial injustice issues and political upheaval that included an attack on our own nation's capital. But even amid these difficult times, I am so proud of the way in which we have all stepped up to support each other and by what we have all accomplished. I am inspired by your resilience and commitment. Our faculty shifted to virtual course delivery and navigated limitations in return to research operations. Our students face challenges on the other side of the screen while they learn to navigate their courses online and still they participated in virtual and socially distanced events and activities even while some experienced unsettled feelings about their futures. Our staff made Herculean efforts transitioning to remote work and working through modernization, changing our finance, payroll, and human resources management procedures to Workday. And many of you accomplished all these things with increased family responsibilities and working extra hours. I want you to know how amazing you all are. Our regional Tri-Cities community stepped up too to support our students in these challenging times. We received donations from Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, STCU, Lamb Weston, Cadwell, and from a variety of individual donors to support the Student Hardship Fund, technology needs, food for the cougar cupboard, and even face masks. These generous gifts allowed our students to stay in school and on track for graduation. With the coming of spring, there is good news on the horizon. 
the vaccine is becoming more readily available to more people. In fact, all ad adults in the state of Washington are eligible starting next week to receive the vaccine. Rite Aid is on the WSU Tri-Cities campus, even as we meet conducting a vaccination clinic to help more of our community members receive COVID-19 vaccinations. They will be here until 7 p.m. and are accepting anyone regardless of phase that they are in. So tell your friends. Through all of this, I am happy to report that last year did not slow progress at WSU Tri-Cities, and we are preparing to take advantage of many opportunities that lay ahead. Let me give you some updates on these activities. In December, we released our campus strategic plan. This plan is the culmination of two years of work and input from so many of you and our community members. I wanna thank you all again for your participation. It is vital in setting the direction our camp, of our campus and is crucial to our success. As a priority for the strategic plan, WSU Tri-Cities will build on our current research strengths that match the strengths and direction of the region in which we live. Tri-Cities and the Mid-Columbia region are leaders in agriculture, especially in growing wine grapes, as well as in energy and the environment. These areas represent our past, present, and future and the region's unique and rich energy setting is critical to the Northwest's economic growth. The Mid-Columbia region plays a strategic role in the future of decarbonized energy by having nearly every sector of the new energy market in its backyard. Nuclear, solar, hydropower, wind, energy storage, and biofuels. With the backing of WSU Systems Energy Assets, WSU Tri-Cities is ready to take a leadership role in assisting with the development and deployment of the decarbonized future we all need. We are doing so in two ways. First, with funding support from the Office of Research, we have combined the WSU PNNL Joint Institute for Bioproducts co-director position with the co-director position of the Bioproducts Sciences and Engineering Laboratory on our campus. This action solidifies the relationship between our two entities and helps maximize opportunities with the shared facility that resides on the Tri-Cities campus. Secondly, the Faculty Senate recently gave interim approval for the addition of a future institute that will be headquartered at WSU Tri-Cities. This institute will serve the energy and the environment sectors regionally as well as across the state, state and nation with education, research, and policy development. A $500,000 lead gift for an endowed professorship in energy systems from longtime Tricidian and energy mogul Bob Ferguson supports the first step for the Institute. We will hire the endowed distinguished professor in 2022-23 academic year to provide leadership in designing and developing out the Institute. Also key to the success of the strategic plan and the long-term sustainability and vibrancy of the campus are three areas that are in need of immediate focus. The first area is the enhancement of the WSU Tri-Cities campus brand and by extension, our reputation. The BARCOM team is working to revamp the marketing look and feel for WSU Tri-Cities, as well as position our campus as the ideal college option in our region. The team is working very closely with admissions to align all efforts for campus marketing to recruitment and enrollment goals. The second area, area unfortunately, is no surprise to any of us, and that is the budget. The budget continues to be a major area of focus for the Tri-Cities campus. 
The planning parameters our campus used to build the operating budget for the current fiscal year incorporated an expected 10% reduction in state allocation, which appears now to have been an accurate prediction. Additionally, there were COVID-related expenses for the Tri-Cities campus that we estimate to be approximately $250,000. Most of these unexpected budget shortfalls were offset by decreased operating expenses with the hiring chill, and we left some positions vacant during the shutdown. This will not be a possible budget balancing strategy for the future, at least not on a continual basis. The outlook for next year at the state level, however, is looking up. The March revenue report indicate that collections, tax collections for the state were 9.5% higher than forecasted. This is very encouraging news for us and bodes well for preventing further cuts to higher education. Our legislators are also aware of the huge reductions to higher education in the last recession, 2008, and are disinclined to make similar cuts. Final reports on state appropriations will not be set until June 2021. We will definitely keep you posted. State funding for maintenance and operations for the new academic building remains a top priority for our state relations team who are advocating for the maximum amount of funding requested. We are optimistic about the MNO for the building and continue to assert this as a priority request for our campus. We are cautiously optimistic that we will receive about three quarters of the ask instead of the previously expected one quarter, or excuse me, one half of the total amount. And again, we will continue, continue advocating for the entire amount. Some of you may be aware that Governor Inslee proposed a furlough for all state employees, including higher education, as part of his budget proposal for the 2021-2023 uh, budget biennium, despite this being very difficult to implement and its disruption to students amid today's difficult circumstances. If you haven't heard yet, we can all breathe a sigh of relief that this pro provision has since been removed from the proposal and will not be moving forward. As I said before, in many ways, budget discussions cannot be had without simulta simultaneously addressing enrollment. We budgeted for a 5.4% enrollment decline this year, but those enrollment estimates proved to be too optimistic the actual enrollment decrease was 6.6% and revenues from enrollment uh, declines are estimated at roughly $170,000 less than the planned for decline. Enrollment deficits are thus threatening to reduce our budget by over $400,000. We continue to monitor fall admission trends the good news is that as of March 19th, freshman admits were up 32% over last year at the same time and up 43% in confirmed freshmen. The bad news is that in line with national trends, transfer admits are down 6% compared to last year at this particular time. We expect this trend to continue for a while, given that community college enrollment dropped nationwide during COVID. But we have already taken steps to stem further loss in enrollment. As a system, the WSU Board of Regents voted in favor of no longer requiring SAT or ACT test scores for the admissions process. I appreciate the commitment from our Board of Regents and academic leaders for implementing updated protocols that allow for a more equitable admissions process. As research has demonstrated time and again, there are significant issues of bias with standardized testing. Instead of using these scores, 
admissions officers will rely on metrics, including high school or community college grade point average that better predict a potential student's ability to succeed and increase the odds of attracting and graduating more students from underrepresented groups. In an effort to strengthen wraparound student support services and strategically grow enrollment across academic areas, we have also merged the Office of Student Affairs with the Office of Academic Affairs. Together, these offices will provide a more holistic and customized approach for direct student support. As we all know, student academic needs don't end in the classroom, just as student affairs services and programs have a direct application for serving students' academic needs. An additional measure to bolster enrollment includes the reestablishment of the Bridges Transfer Program between Columbia Basin College and WSU Tri-Cities. This program provides students with a seamless transfer option and the benefit of re receiving student services from both campuses, regardless of campus that they are currently attending, and they pay no application fees to WSU Tri-Cities and receive stable tuition costs. We have likewise reached across the southern border of Washington by launching a new program called the I-82 Advantage. We can now offer in-state tuition rates to students residing in Umatilla County, just across the river in Oregon students will now have the chance to save thousands of dollars by qualifying for in-state tuition with just a 30 to 40 minute drive to campus. Blue Mountain Community College is in this county as well, and we are extending the I-82 program to all students who attend that institution, regardless of county. True to our land grant mission to provide greater access to our regional community for education, diversity on our campus has steadily increased since 2012. First generation students make up about 43% of our student population and enrollment for students of color stands at 44%. In order to better support these students, and improve retention, which like recruitment is a very important focus for us all, is to provide services that these students need. A researched way to show our support is to also diversify our faculty. I am pleased to announce that we are in the process of hiring a faculty member whose research includes and directly supports underrepresented communities. WSU Tri-Cities was selected out of 27 applications to receive one of a total of three faculty hired as a result of Provost Chilton's Cluster Hire Initiative. Kate McAteer is negotiating with a potential faculty member who is a scholar of indigenous knowledge, data sovereignty, and the decolonization of our digital technology and culture program. We could not be more thrilled to be part of this cl cluster hire. Not only does this help meet our goals for assistant, assisting students, as well as adding faculty to this popular degree program, we are grateful for the ability to add a tenure line faculty member without impacting our already strapped budget in the long term because funding for this position comes from the provost's office. A new round of funding for the cluster hire program has just been announced and I urge you all to consider submitting an application for faculty in your disciplines. Moving on to other good news. The pandemic has provided us with an incredible opportunity to complete the construction of the new academic building and other needed renovations. Construction for the new building remains on schedule and within budget. We anticipate occupancy by the end of May. I can't wait to show it to you. Frankly, to show it off to all of you. The academic building is a 40,000 square foot building and houses a suite 
of teaching laboratories, active learning classrooms, and collaborative meeting spaces for students, faculty, community partners, um, including an outdoor the amphitheater that's going to seat around 100 people. The construction of this building was fully funded by the Washington State Legislature, and we are seeking naming opportunities to enhance the facility. The first gift in the door is from Kirk and Noel Schultz. I mention this because it is a tremendous show of support for the Tri-Cities campus. We will be planning a grand opening ceremony for the building sometime in fall 2021 when we can all gather. Articulating with the new building is the campus library. We are moder modernizing, that seems to be the word, modernization um, of the pandemic. We are modernizing the library space into what we're calling a learning commons with library resources on the second floor and all academic support services, such, such as advising, career services, tutoring, the writing center, the testing center, and the TRIO student support program and the new TRIO STEM grant on the first floor for easy access and one-stop shopping for students. Additionally, the Stories Veterans Monument was renovated and is now fully recognizable as a true tribute to veterans. It has changed the face of the South entrance, entrance to campus. I have yet to visit my office and not see a patron or passerby sitting on the benches and enjoying the scenery. We will be unveiling the monument along with the General James Mattis Leadership Library, newly installed in the Veterans Center this fall. We are thankful to General Mattis for giving his name to this effort. The idea for the initiative actually came from his book, Call Sign Chaos, in which General Mattis talks about being an avid reader. He has been quoted as saying, Thanks to my reading, I have never been caught flat-footed by any situation, never at a loss for how any problem has been addressed successfully or unsuccessfully before. It doesn't give me all the answers, but it lights what is often a dark path ahead. He implores us all to read, read, read. And speaking of reading, the concept papers on the topic of 1WSU have dominated the conversations in many of my meetings over the past couple of months, and I'm sure that is true for many of you as well. As you are likely aware, President Schultz and Provost Chilton have outlined a proposal to advance 1WSU in concept papers that have circulated through the Board of Regents, faculty, staff, and students. All have been encouraged to ask questions about the evolution of the WSU system and to provide input. Thus, the process so far has been inclusive and we will be consistently provided opportunities to shape the evolution of our system. And as the president indicated in the State of the University Address, this is not a quick fix. It is a multi-year process that will take some time to advance and get right. In the end, we all want to keep the processes that are working well and refine the ones that are not. I will also share that in my point of view, any positive outcomes are dependent on the development of a strong system office with a broad view of the system as well as a mission to serve WSU by attending to all units in an equitable manner, regardless of differences in size, location, maturity, and history. After speaking with many of you, including as part of a faculty town hall, we imagine a strong system model that would not take away from the important and unique parts of WSU, such as being an R1 institution, providing tenure and promotion across the system, having integrated departments, 
and the singular Washington State University diploma. Instead, it could, and I do emphasize could, create some much needed clarity and coordination for our system. Some of the ways I have heard that one WSU could advance our WSU, WSU system is by creating clear and transparent processes and policies, creating a consistent and equitable budget model for all campuses and units that would allow for growth and innovation helping develop and promote priorities for government funding across the system and increase transparency and equity in seeking such funding, ensuring a strong brand identity, creating recognition opportunities and increasing access for the state to embrace its WSU campuses, all of the campuses as the state's university arbitrating disagreements that prevent forward movement, increasing collaboration with WSU Extension to enhance entrepreneurship, partnerships, and incubator opportunities, and creating a new and stronger culture for Washington State University across the state. Because of the value, the campuses gain from being interdependent, it is important to reiterate that one WSU is not an either or proposition. In other words, full autonomy for campuses is not the goal, nor is it desirable for many reasons. The goal of one WSU for the Tri-Cities campus is for more autonomy in areas that will remove barriers for growth and innovation for a fully functioning and integrated campus without disrupting that which is working well. As we move through this process, and I do believe it will take several years to move through it, we will continue to reach out for your input. At this point, I'd like to shift gears back to the beginning of this speech where I said that the faculty, staff, and students of WSU Tri-Cities are amazing because you are. In fact, you were recognized for being your awesome selves in some major ways this year. More than $45 million in grant funding was received this year. As examples, the following faculty and staff obtained major grants this year. Birgitta Arin, received a $2.5 million US Department of Energy grant to support advancing ways of turning sewage sludge into energy. This grant is in partnership with PNNL, the Walla Walla Wastewater Treatment Plant and Clean Vantage LLC. Judy Morrison, Academic Director for the College of Education at WSU Tri-Cities received a $2.85 million National Science Foundation grant to support geoliteracy project development and implementation in local high schools. Gear Up, led by John Lobdell and his team, received two $20 million grants to support middle school and high school students on their quest to obtain a post-secondary degree. Byron Marlowe was also honored with a Fulbright Award and is now completing research and teaching in Austria on the experience of wine tasting rooms internationally. And I just say that is great work if you can get it. So go Byron. Several of our faculty were awarded tenure and promotion. Four faculty were promoted to professor Eric Johnson from the Department of Teaching and Learning in the College of Education. Han Wu Lei, Department of Biological Systems, Engineering, College of Agricultural, Human and Natural Resource Sciences. Judy Morrison from the Department of Teaching and Learning in the College of Education. And Bin Yang, Department of Biological Systems, Engineering, College of Agricultural, Human, and Natural Resource Sciences. Two faculty were promoted to the rank of associate professor, 
Byron Marlowe, School of Hospitality Bus Business Management, Carson College of Business, Robin Mays from the Department of English and the College of Arts and Sciences. Congratulations to all six. At our annual Women of Distinction Award Ceremony, four individuals were named as WSU Tri-Cities Women of Distinction for 2021. They are Janet Peters, WSU Tri-Cities Associate Professor of Psychology and Director of Instructional Excellence and Innovation. Lindsay Leitner, Coordinator for the WSU Tri-Cities College of Education. Gabriela Ramirez, WSU Tri-Cities Psychology alumna and Spanish teacher at Tri-Cities Prep Catholic High School. And Michaela Thafanga, Thafangza, WSU Tri-Cities nursing student. I would also like to acknowledge what an unexpected honor it was to be awarded the inaugural Women of Distinction Legacy Award. I am truly honored and humbled. We had several faculties who also earned awards through their academic colleges this year. Kate McAteer, Vice Chan Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs and Associate Professor of Biology, was awarded the Outstanding Career Achievement Award for Career Track Faculty for the College of Arts and Sciences. Ellie Sweet, Associate Professor of Biology, received the Excellence in Teaching by a Career Track Faculty Member awarded through the College of Arts and Sciences. Tracy Hanshu, Assistant Professor of History, received the Early Career Achievement Award from the College of Arts and Sciences. Finally, as I shared with all of you last fall, WSU Tri-Cities has four new awards to recognize individuals for their work on this campus. These awards are given to honor those among us who epitomize the highest levels of excellence in the pursuit of campus mission and goals. The Teaching Faculty Award is given to the faculty member or a group of collaborating faculty who demonstrate excellence in teaching by meeting two or more of the following criteria. Using learning communities that encourage integration across courses. Using undergraduate research experiences that encourages the connection of key concepts using service learning or community-based learning in which field-based experiential learning with community partners is an instructional strategy. Using diversity, equity, and, and inclusion in which a course has been designed or redesigned to address either explicitly or implicitly issues of diversity, equity, and conclusion. I can tell you that we had many wonderful nominees this year. We so appreciate the lengths to which faculty have gone in order to create such a positive experience for students. For the 2021 award, I am pleased to announce that Lori Nelson, scholarly assistant professor of biology has been awarded this honor. Dr. Nelson brings knowledge and interest to every course she teaches through thoughtful, engaging class activities and what people have called stealth interventions. She promotes the development of a growth mindset and a sense of belonging in her students. Dr. Nelson's commitment to improvement, thoughtful approach to course design, and development of classes that are creative, interesting, and fun make her a deserving recipient of this year's WSU Tri-Cities Distinguished Teaching Award. Congratulations to Dr. Lori Nelson. 
the Chancellor's Distinguished Research Excellence Award is given to a WSU Tri-Cities faculty member whose research, scholarship, or creative work is exemplary and whose work has had a positive influence on the broader community. It is the campus's highest research honor. For 2021, I am pleased to announce that Dr. Birgitta Aring, Professor of Biological Systems and Chemical Engineering, has been awarded this honor. Dr. Aring holds a joint faculty appointment in Chemical Engineering and Biological Systems Engineering. Her current work is focused on continuing research and graduate education in the area of industrial industrial biotechnology for bioenergy and bioproducts development, as well as the commercial application of these technologies. As already mentioned, she recently received a $2.5 million grant from the US Department of Energy for improvements to the creation of biogas from sewage sludge at small wastewater treatment plants. She has additional continuing research in a range of interests, including that of helping a former NASA launch site in its chemical cleanup efforts. Congratulations, Dr. Aring. Endowed with a donation from Peter Smith, former interim vice chancellor for finance and administration, who recognized the importance of adjunct faculty to our campus, the WSU Tri-Cities Outstanding Adjunct Business Faculty Award recognizes an adjunct faculty member who exemplifies high quality teaching in finance, accounting, math, or other business related academic programming. For 2021, I am pleased to announce that Scott Koopman is recognized as the WSU Tri-Cities Ad Outstanding Adjunct Business Faculty Member. Scott teaches some of the most difficult subject matter in business, finance, and operations. He is extremely flexible in taking on new courses, and his students praise him, saying that finance is never easy to learn but the lectures for this course are extremely helpful, making a difficult concept wholly understandable. The environment in which the classroom in which he teaches is always friendly, relaxed, and yes, even fun. Congratulations to Scott Koopman. The Distinguished Employee Excellence Award recognizes an employee with outstanding contributions to WSU Tri-Cities in one or more of the following areas of focus related to the strategic plan, student success, research and scholarship, accessibility and equity, regional and community engagement, campus culture and environment, institutional effectiveness, we had several nominations for this category, and it was a very difficult decision. As a result, two awards will be given for 2021. The first Chancellor's Distinguished Employee Award this year goes to Lori Maleka. Lori makes every effort to remember students' names and is especially known for her ability to help students navigate complement complicated processes. She has been integral to the Cougar Cupboard, ensuring students have access to food even when they cannot make it to campus. She works exceptionally hard to support staff and students and is known for bringing people together to create a community environment. She, is consist she consistently encourages colleagues to be resilient, focus on their strengths, and to look out for one another. She is proud to work at Tri-Cities and embodies the cougar spirits and the val, or cougar spirit, sounds like she's drinking if I say spirits, and values, um, and the values of WSU Tri-Cities 
And I'm telling you, she makes a very tasty granola bar. Congratulations, Lori. Well deserved. The second Chancellor's Distinguished Employee Excellence Award this year goes to Megan Murray. Megan is a dedicated employee and is a tremendous asset to our campus. She is passionate about students' experience and their academic success. She is well regarded as a photographer, writer, editor, and produ producer of marketing content and materials. Her work consistently raises the visibility of WSU Tri-Cities, both locally and at the system level. She has a thorough understanding of Tri-City stakeholders. She is critically aware of resource availability and leverages those resources for the benefit of students. She is also a model colleague who quietly leads critical initiatives for this campus. Congratulations, Megan. Lori and Megan, each of you embody the strategic priorities set by the campus. We are grateful for your contributions to WSU Tri-Cities. Thank you. And to every campus award winner, thank you for your contributions to campus. We are grateful for your leadership. And we will give a round of virtual applause for all of our award winners. I would like to close by reiterating that although the pandemic brought many challenges for our students, faculty, and staff, and our campus overall, we have made much progress over the past year and are well set up for a vibrant future. My greatest priority for the next year is to safely return our students, faculty, and staff to campus in accordance with federal, state, and regional and local guidelines that we can continue on our path forward. We have much to look forward to on this campus. Again and again, thank you all for everything you continue to do for our students, each other, our campus, WSU, and our community. And we simply cannot end the state of the campus address without a big go kooks. And I wish every one of you a great evening. Thank you for being here today.